welcome. My name is Giovanni. I'm part of the machine learning group at ULB in Brussels. And today I'm going to present my uh, paperwork entitled Onboard Unit Big Data Short Term Traffic Forecasting Urban Transportation Networks. A very, very long title. To give you the context of my work, actually, my research is part of the project called MobiI, that is European funder, and which goal is to promote smart mobility in Brussels capital region by designing and setting up a performance monitoring systems with advanced mobility indicators to better understand mobility in uh, in the region and also support local authorities in design more sustainable policies concerning transportation. To start by talking about the data, actually, those data are related to trucks, heavy good vehicles driving in Brussels capital region. As we know, train transport has a lot of economic, environmental, and social impacts, and in particular, and especially causes a lot of wear to road infrastructure. In Brussels capital region, since the 1st of April 2016, heavy good vehicles need to be equipped with an onboard unit to collect the data by a system called ViaPass. To this system, Brussels Mobility has a sex access and uh, collect those data to better understand the traffic dynamics in the region. As I said, every heavy good vehicle needs to have an onboard unit inside and uh, that is sending every 30 seconds several information among which we have the identifier of the track that is reset every day at the same hour for privacy reason then the time step a gps location and direction speed and several other information of course all this information could be exploited and uh, we could use them to promote smart mobility in brussels Think about all the heavy good vehicles driving in our transportation networks. It is not difficult to imagine that the first challenge we encounter is to store and actually process the OBU data. The solution adopted by Brussels Mobility for those data relies on a centralized PostgreSQL database. But the large volume and the streaming natures of the data make it no more suitable. In fact, we have roughly 19 giga per working day, terabyte of data per year, and we need to collect those data every two minutes in order to not lose any data. Another challenge we face is related to noise. As it is very common in data science, data could have a lot of potential, and this is the case of onboard unit data, but at the same time, the, the valuable information needs to be clean by uh, noise factors. Several aspects uh, are contributing to that. One of these is the fact that we are collecting data related to heavy good vehicles that weigh over 3.5 tons and so we are not a complete scenarios of the traffic. Another aspect is the fact that sometimes drivers forget to switch on the onboard unit devices and this contribute to losses of information. Another aspect is the fact that sometimes we face communication problem and so the app uh, data collection systems is not able to retrieve uh, every 30 second valuable information related to the gps location of the trucks time step identifiers and so on anyway we can get rid of this noise so if we have the uh, proper tools and the proper uh, and a proper architecture in order to collect and process those data and this is what we're gonna see later on therefore in order to tackle the aforementioned challenges and in order to valorize the OBU data we we are collecting we aim at designing a scalable architecture that will be able not only for distributed storage and processing but also to forecast to predict the traffic flow and the average speed in short terms at the transportation network scale for what concern the OBU data. So as you can see in the picture, you can see what is called the Lambda architecture that is addressing both the big data nature and the real-time nature of the data with inherent noise. And this architecture is scalable, fault tolerant, with low latency, and is able to process and visualize in near real time the OBU data. So this is what we needed to do. 
about the lambda architecture. This architecture is made up of three layer, the batch layer, the speed layer, and the serving layer. As you can see from the pictures, the data flow is going from the left to the right. So the data are collected from the Viapa server and then they are injected to both the batch layer and the streaming layer. The batch layer is dealing more with the big data nature of our OBU data while the streaming layer with the real-time needs. Then both the results can be merged or individually visualized uh, into the serving layer where the user have, uh, has access. The data are well collected in Hadoop HDFS and stored in a parquet format for optimal storing and processing. Talking about the batch layer of Lambda architecture, this layer, as I said before, is dealing more with the big data, big data nature of our OBU data. Here we collect the data from the Viapa server every two minutes and we make sure that we don't lose any data. So we store the data in all the data in HDFS and then we have to uh, the duplicate to reformat and save in a parquet format still in HDFS by running a Spark routine in Python where we obtain a final master dataset. On this dataset, we can then run user queries in SQL or advanced analytics in Spark for gaining batch views of the OBU data collected so far. Talking here about the speed and the user layer quickly. So still we have the Viapas server where we collect our data every two to 15 minutes accordingly. We pre-process the data and we persist the information we need through sparse streaming. So for instance here, as you can see in, um, in the picture at the top, uh, we have the Brussels Capital Region Transportation Network, network where we map our OBU data in order to get information regarding the traffic flow or the mean average speed in every street segment. We then save the result in a JSON format that can be visualized through Django in our platform in the user layer where the user have access and can get information about the traffic flow for instance according to the color intensity in every street segment. Here you have some example of visualization that can be done in a user layer. Here we made uh, our platform in Django and uh, you can see on the left and the right side respectively batch views and real-time views so in the left side for instance you can visualize the number of trucks present at a certain time of the day in its communes and the color uh, indicates the if a commune is more or less congested and uh, while on the right side you can have several options for instance you can select a certain layer for instance a certain urban or commercial area a certain uh, street segment uh, and see what is the traffic flow or the mean speed uh, related so far i've been talking about the lambda architecture now i will highlight the contribution we made by employing this architecture in order to perform a short terms road traffic forecasting at the transportation network scale. This is an important topic in the intelligence transportation uh, system research. So in the pictures you can see the street segment we consider related to Brussels capital region that are roughly 500, meaning 500 time series. Below you can see the data frame where we work on. So going from the left to the right side, we have the street identifier, the daytime, the number of trucks for every street segment and the average speed for every street segment. So we employed here both single models and adaptive strategies at the network's transportation scale. To perform short-term traffic forecasting, at first we implement single models. First of all, we implement a baseline model, a naive model, that is taking the last uh, observed value as a prediction for uh, the next time step. 
This is very attractive in practice, while less in the literature, because it required uh, uh, low computational effort and is easier to implement, and also very effective. Then we implement a seasonal persistent model, where within a sliding window, we consider the observation at the same hour and the same day in the previous one week seasons, and uh, we compute the mean of those observations as a persisted forecast. Then uh, we implement also a statistical model, an autoregressive model, and a machine learning model, a gradient boosting regressor model. These two are also very important in literature because the statistical models are generally employed uh, at an uh, earlier stage in short-term traffic forecasting, while the machine learning Machine learning models are employed later and uh, they are recently very attractive because they take advantage of the huge amount of data to capture uh, the non-linearity present uh, in traffic forecasting. In, and this is uh, very... Afterwards, we implement adaptation strategies to perform short-term traffic forecasting. The idea behind that is that, especially for transportation networks where traffic is a complex phenomenon with an ever-changing environment, there is no single model that performs equally well at all times. Models have different degrees of expertise in different areas of the input space. Therefore, we implement simple combination strategies like mean and median of all forecasts, linear combination strategies, where the idea is to set the combination wave equal to the inverse of recent mean square error and individual model selection strategies, that is to select a specific model for a particular time series according to the mean square error still over a rolling window. Regarding the experimental analysis, we took two months of OBU data from the 1st of January until the 20th of February 2019, considering the data with one hour time resolution. We predict separately traffic flow and the mean speed on every link of the transportation network. We divide each time series related to the street segment accordingly to 70-30% training test proportion. We perform frequential evaluation, that means each observation it at first tested for, um, for the model and then used to train the models, updating the fitted parameters incrementally. Then, for each time series, we compute the NMSE, that is the ratio between the mean square error of the predictor and the naive mean square error, and we did the same for the mean absolute error. We then assess the accuracy at the network level, that is, the percentage of the street links where the NMSE and the NMAE are smaller than one. Here I report the result regarding the short-term traffic forecasting contribution and more details are given in the paperwork. Here what I wanted to highlight is the fact that uh, adaptation strategies always outperform single models result in terms of forecasting accuracy and robustness. This is in accordance with previous studies, but those studies were just related to single street segment. Here we extend those results for the entire transportation networks. We have seen that by employing from three to more models, we actually improve the forecasting result. Also, simple combination strategies have been seen to be more performant than more sophisticated ones, and this is due to the fact that it's non trivial to set the wave to assign to the model forecast. Finally, the best results are shown to be given for both the traffic flow and the mean speed from the simple median combination strategy. To conclude the work, so here we have seen the lambda architecture 
how to employ it for scalable storage processing and visualization of the OView data. We then perform short-term traffic forecasting in terms of traffic flow and mean speed, and we have seen how to employ adaptation strategies that outperform single models at the transportation network scale. In particular, we have seen that simple middle combination strategy showed the best result for both variables, predicted variables. Future works that actually we are already implementing is to model spatial temporal dependency of OBU data by employing deep learning techniques. In particular, we are employing LSTM and CNN in order to capture the known linearities of traffic. I would finally thank all the everybody and especially the organizers of the conference and remind that if you want more detail about the project and the data to please visit uh, the links below and uh, that's it. Goodbye and take care.